Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to do another update of what is going on up in the stratosphere. It does look likely now, uh, very likely in fact, we're going to see a major southern stratospheric warming in the next week or two with the zonal wind winds up in the stratosphere reversing going below zero meters per second as many of you know that could trigger more blocking through the troposphere and could give us uh, some cold weather and at least an enhanced risk of cold weather towards the end of february and start of march it could have longer effects than that or it could have no effects it is very uncertain what exactly will happen with it and in today's video we'll run through what is exactly going on in the stratosphere and in the second half of the video we will touch on some longer range charts uh, and data which could suggest how it could propagate through the atmosphere and affect the troposphere where our weather really does take place and how it could start to send us as I said colder uh, or at least more blocked in 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 parts of northern and western europe into uh, the end of february and start of march so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the link's in the description now we did do an update on saturday on this and it has progressed further and it's just looked more and more likely pretty much 90%, 80-90% of ensemble members now have a major sudden stratospheric warming, and even those that don't are going very, very weak in terms of those zonal mean winds. So it's like pretty much guaranteed now we'll see at least a major warming, perhaps a major sudden stratospheric warming um, definitely uh, is looking most likely outcome here. It does look likely it will take place probably around the 15th to the 20th of February, so in the next sort of 7 to 14 days or so, um, and it will probably start to have impacts for us at the surface into the last 5 days or so of February, maybe into the start of March as well. So as I said, we'll run through the GFS, we'll have a look at some of the ECMWF data, and we'll have a look at the ECMWF longer range charts, having a look at what it could do in the troposphere into March. So we do start on the latest GFS operational run. Now this is one operational run, but they've been very consistent with their major warmings. Um, so do take the exact uh, exact pattern here with a pinch of salt, but this overall theme is looking highly, highly likely, as I said. Now at the moment you can see the blue blob that's over sort of Scandinavia, Greenland, and just to the north of the UK is the remnants of the stratospheric polar vortex. And that has been significantly weakened through January. It was very strong through December into early January. And we did think there could have been a sudden stratospheric warming in January. Instead, it just turned out into a sort of a minor warming, um, still putting quite a hit to the stratospheric winds, but not completely reversing them, just weakening them down uh, to well below average. So the stratosphere is already pretty weak and it is displaced, not directly sat over the North Pole, but not distorted enough to make many impacts through uh, to our level in the atmosphere. However, as we run through, it continues gathering strength, sitting basically over the top of the UK, in fact. Again, its exact positioning doesn't have too many ramifications yet, but watch what happens. A major warming appears and completely demolishes it, uh, reduces those temperatures, um, completely reverses the zonal winds, uh, zonal mean winds over the North Pole. You can see just the north of Svalbard, those islands just to the east of Greenland. That's pretty much where the North Pole is. Um, and you can see major warming there, uh, good sort of 30 or 40 degrees higher than it should be. Um, in terms of averages and you can see the remnants of the polar vortex are strung out through the north atlantic and sort of central europe down into the mid latitudes uh, and it completely is demolished with none of these blue colors left uh, remaining and even in its longer term it starts to reorganize perhaps over iceland but we see another major warming as well so not only could this be one sort of major sudden stratospheric warming event giving uh, a reversal of those zone wind winds it could do it for a prolonged period of time a number of days here perhaps even longer than that into weeks perhaps if we did see a secondary warning a warming like this and as we'll see um, in a minute i'll show you the slice through the atmosphere for that gf this gfs run and you'll be able to see how we see a major warming a slight recovery but not 
really coming all too much and the perhaps another major warming as well so if you now go over to the weatheriscool.com and have a look at the slices through the atmosphere for that gfs six o'clock run so on the left you can see the actual zonal mean winds up in the stra up in well through the atmosphere here and you can see at the moment they're relatively strong, but in about a week's time they do go extremely negative, a massive reversal. Uh, now this isn't exactly over the North Pole, so it's not going to be minus 50 meters per second right over the North Pole, but it does uh, emphasize this well. And you see throughout the atmosphere it does weaken, but we're not seeing any major reversal um, sort of down into the troposphere, down to sort of 300-500 HPA down towards the surface. And you can see on the far right, there is a brief recovery and then a, another weakening as well. So that's why I said there could be a secondary attack on the polar vortex, which has already been demolished and it will keep it demolished uh, even further. Now on the right, you can see the anomalies and you can see once again, almost 70 meters per second or, or lower really, um, lesser than what it should be this time of year. And you can see it mainly stays up in the stratosphere you can see there are signs right towards the end of the run into early March that it could start to propagate through the troposphere. And that is something we do need to keep an eye on because there's no point uh, if you're looking for cold weather, colder block to we uh, weather to see this major warming up high in the stratosphere and it not come to the surface. So we'd really need it to come to the surface if you want that colder weather. Um, and I do think it will. We'll just have to keep tabs on how these charts do develop again. Again, this is one singular GFS run, and things can change very quickly. Um, and you know, the next run could show uh, those blues descending down into the troposphere and starting to impact us. But that's why I don't really expect anything major till at least the end of the month, perhaps start of March. Now, these charts go all the way up to the 23rd of March, so as I said, probably uh, another few days after at least to see any impacts towards the surface. So, definitely, this is a longer range thing, so at least two or three weeks away from making any significant um, impacts on what we see uh, day to day. Now if we do have a look at a, another chart here, these are the zonal mean winds from the last four GFS midnight runs running from the 5th of February, the 6th of February, the 7th and the 8th. And you can see in the little um, graph on the bottom left here if I just zoom in quickly. The red is from the 5th, the green line is from the 6th, the orange is from the 7th, and the blue line is from the 8th. And it's just generally meant to show you the trends, and this is the forecast zone, I mean, winds up in the stratosphere. And you can see all the past four runs at midnight have all got the zone, I mean, winds at around 30 metres per second at the moment, all dropping them down to below 5, down towards 0 within the next two weeks. And you can see the most recent run, the blue one, gets us right down to zero and keeps us around zero, if not dropping us further into the negative area into en uh, end of February. Again, showing the showing that it's keeping us with those very weak zone wind winds for a number of days here, at least five days here, perhaps even longer. And again, that just improves the chances of all of this slowing momentum uh, and easterly momentum really building here, propagating through the atmosphere. And if you do finally have a look at some of the ensembles here from the GFS, and you can see where the uh, zone mean winds have been over the past uh, number of months, really, all the way back to September, you see the blue line, that's where we've been. We've been average to above average generally through December and January, and you can see it didn't impact us all too much because we saw very cold weather in December, so it doesn't always correlate, but more often than not, it does. And you can see towards the end of January, we saw that quite a big warming down towards around 10 meters per second, but it did recover and it's now average to slightly above average. And you see this big drop down towards zero, majority down towards zero or lower than that. And no real rebounds here either. We're not seeing any shooting back towards average, really, all keeping us either in uh, negative territory or at least very, very weak. So, yeah, no real signs of any major rebound. And pretty much all ensemble members are getting us towards a major warming region. And the majority are down to the southern stratospheric warming region of zero or less. 
Now, if we do go over to the ECMWF charts and see what that is showing, this is a very similar chart of what we just saw for the GFS, but for the ECMWF and zoomed in a bit more and going slightly more in the longer range. So definitely looking more extended range here. Um, and you can see 30 meters per second at the moment and within the next week or two, dropping down to zero, if not well below zero from the majority of the ensemble members. The average of the ensemble members here down towards minus 10 meters per second and it keeps us below zero for about a week maybe to as long as 10 days here now some go down to 25 or 30 meters per second which is ridiculously weak zonal mean winds and you had to think if something like that came off we would see major blocking through the atmosphere uh, now of course that won't always spell cold weather for the uk because again there will be colder sides and mild sides to the block but inevitably there will be impacts somewhere um, down in the troposphere if we saw something like that others have much weaker uh, warming but still getting us down sort of zero uh, and you can see there are a few anomalously milder runs around zero to five but all are well below average and you can see the majority are below that red line which is the 10th percent i'll just show you how weak these zone mean winds are likely to be and of course the important thing as i said is the longevity of this all the way through march doesn't really look like it's going to be recovering at all the polar vortex um, for the majority of the ensemble members here, it's going to remain very weak um, and, yeah, not looking likely to recover towards average, really, at all through March. So very interesting. Of course, these things can change. It is extended range, so it could shoot up into early March. But from the latest ECMWF data, it is keeping us really, really weak in terms of zone winds. Again, increasing the chance of blocking prevailing more through the atmosphere. Now, if you finish the video by having a look at some longer range charts uh, for the ECMWF uh, data, again, this is now into the troposphere, so looking at actually our day to day weather. Now, this is quite a complicated chart here, but once you know what you're looking at, it is not too difficult to understand. Now, on the x axis on the bottom, we've got the dates running from the 6th of February, so when this run was done a few days ago, all the way out to the 22nd of March, so really extended range stuff. Now, we've got these sort of bar charts here and it's showing probabilities all adding up to 100% here and anything that is blue is showing a positive NAO sort of westerly winds very strong low pressure up towards Greenland and Iceland red is going a Scandinavian block so high pressure normally over us or to our north and our east green is showing a negative NAO which is blocking in the North Atlantic up towards Greenland and Iceland um, here a Purple is ATR, which is an Atlantic ridge, so ridging up towards Iceland, but no major blocking. And then again, grey is a bit no regime, so a little bit in between everything. So again, it just gives us probabilities of what the most likely outcome is from the ECMWF ensembles in the longer term. Now, over the next few days, we've got deep reds. Uh, of course, there's going to be a very high chance in the short range they do get it right. And you can see here, it's a block uh, sat over the top of us, and that's what we've been seeing on our daily videos. High pressure just sat over the top of us, giving us generally cool feel. As we head forward towards the second half of this month, the sign is that it could turn a lot more westerly, a lot more stormy, with a positive NAO through around the 15th to around the 25th. Uh, you can see that from the blues, and again, the, the hash sort of block at the bottom is showing the most likely scenario here so you can see positive nao definitely prevailing again that doesn't necessarily mean we'll be so stormy because we could have that block sat over the top of us so it could be more and settle further northwards and drive further southwards and again we'll tackle that when it starts to come in the short range models or the medium range models and we'll be looking at in our daily videos but i do want to concentrate on what's happening through early march and uh, sort of late february we sort of switch from positive nao to a red block and stay pretty much blocked from the majority here all the way through march again it's extended range so things can change but the signal here is for most um or the sort of majority opinion here from the ecmwf ensemble members is for a red atlantic a red uh, scandinavian block uh, and again could that be signs that the ensemble members are picking up on the sudden stratospheric warming? Are they picking up on that blocking, propagating through the atmosphere, impacting us through late February, early March, and staying with us through March? You can't say for certain, but that is definitely the signal here. And if this 
sort of pattern from the ensemble is, is coming without the influence of a sun stratosphere warming. If that sun stratosphere warming that's coming is not influencing these ensemble members too much yet, then once it does, it could just sort of maintain or increase this blocking signal. So this is why we really do need to keep an eye on the end of this month into early March, uh, as that really could be a period where it could go very blocked and could go very cold. But again, it's the 8th of February as I'm recording this. We're still a good three weeks away from March. So there are still lots of things up for grabs. Now, if you finally have a look at the weekly mean anomalies for the pressure for the 500 HPA heights. So down towards the uh, troposphere, again, showing you where high pressure, low pressure is. And if we were seeing sun stratosphere warming propagating through the atmosphere here, we'd expect to see these oranges and reds really sat directly over the North Pole. So at the moment, you can see a lot of oranges over the top of us. This is for the week we are experiencing right now. Uh, and again, that's what we're seeing with high pressure over the top of us controlling. And that continues into next week. And more of a flat westerly flow here. Again, that's signs of a positive NAO up towards Greenland and Iceland. High pressure, more in the North Atlantic. Could be a bit of uh, up and down oscillating between high pressure, low pressure. And high pressure could dominate in the south a bit here. But it's what happens in the first week of March. You can see major blocking appears towards Scandinavia and Siberia and Russia. Low pressure shoved more towards northern Canada. The week following that, into early March, look what happens. Again, we're in the longer range. The signals are going to be weaker. But huge areas of orange and above, um, or sort of uh, big blocking uh, and above average heights here over the North Pole, uh, up towards Scandinavia, Greenland, down into Europe as well, and blues down towards North Africa, Spain and France, indicating that's where the jet stream is going much further southwards. Again, this could not be because of the sudden stress of warming. This could just be what the Eastern Blue F is anticipating. Um, and, but regardless, if the SSW did come off, which is looking highly likely, and it did propagate through the atmosphere, this is the sort of pattern we're expecting to see. And yes, if this is not taken into account, the SSW, this pattern could just be reinforced um, as that data does come through. Now, if we head through the rest of March, towards the 13th to the 20th, we maintain that huge blocking signal, and you can see more blues appearing towards France and Spain, blues appearing towards Central um, Asia, again indicating that we could see a lot of areas of cold tropospheric polar vortex leaking out into the mid-latitudes, and here, of course, we could see easterly winds. Again, we'll have to see exactly how this does play out, but signs here from the long-range eastern WF charts that we could be going cold and blocked into March. Um, again, could be because of the SSW, um, and could not be because of the SSW, but whatever happens, the SSW will encourage this sort of pattern, perhaps reinforce it as well. So again, we have looked very much in the longer range here, not expecting to see any of these impacts really at the surface in our day-to-day -day lives for at least two to three weeks, if not longer. But it is something we do really need to keep an eye on. It's a very interesting topic, uh, as it does allow us to sort of have a look at longer range regimes. Um, but for the time being, as we saw from those ECMWF longer range probability charts, it does look likely it'll probably go quite unsettled with a positive NAO in the next few weeks. So don't think we're going to see any cold or blocked weather for the next week or two at least. Um, but we'll have to see as we do head towards the end of this month into March. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. We'll probably do another update in a few days' time or maybe this time next week. We'll just have to see what sort of data does come out. Um, of course, there'll be another ECMWF uh, uh, data dump tomorrow, I think, or on Friday. So we'll, again, we'll have a look at that. Uh, maybe we'll do a video on that when that does come out. See if the signal continues to be reinforced as well. So as I said, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.